Let me get started. Or Miss Valentine or Miss Sergeant. I'm here. Uh, Mr. Armillo. Present. Miss Valentine. Miss Keyless. John Davis present. Miss Lopez. Present. Miss Russo. Present. Mr. De Jesus. Mr. De Jesus. Miss Hernandez. Present. Miss Sanchez. Do you guys hear me? Yes. Miss no. Miss San Sanchez. Mr. Suega, Miss Mr. Toledo, Miss Aguirre, Miss Sanfantas, she says she wouldn't be here. I see Miss Aquila's here. And Miss Valentine. Master Sergeant, I made it, okay. And Miss Day Sis. Is Mr. Keelis here? Ms. Valentine is here, sorry. Do you guys hear me? We have six present. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. Thanks. We have six present. We do not have a quorum. Do we move along with the agenda? Yes, yes, ma'am. We can move along with the agenda. Uh, we just can't make any, we can't vote on anything. Okay. So, um, so we can't vote on anything. So we can't even adopt the agenda. We can't adopt the minutes, correct? Uh, that's correct, ma'am. Okay, so do we want to uh, reschedule this meeting? What do we want to do? I I think we can just go through the agenda. I think we have to have a meeting. Uh, we can discuss but if there's anything that uh, uh, most of the stuff I think, if, I'm, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Armillo, uh, we need the members for most of the stuff on the agenda, like the principal evaluation and the other votes, and then the member the membership discussion. Uh, so I think that uh, most of the meet of the meeting, we probably have to move to the next. Uh, I think the only thing we can offer at this meeting is uh, public participation. Yeah, we can uh, still do public participation and uh, the committee reports. Uh, we just can't vote on the agenda and uh, or uh, adopt any motions. Great. So then we'll go to um, public participation. We would just, I didn't get a formal request for a participation for boards, but we can open it up to any public here now uh, for public participation. I'd rather do that. Okay, so we're opening up for public participation. I have a question. Do we have public participation in our agenda before the report? We do. Okay, because in that case, we can go an informal meeting. So we can review the reports first and until we touch public participation, we can touch that. Yeah, so we just opened it up, Norma, for public participation at this time. If there's anyone that would like to okay. do public participation. If not, then we'll go into our reports. So if there's no public participation, we could go into our committee reports. The student is not here, so we can go straight to that. I'm sorry. Ma'am. 
the student is not here, so we can go straight into Perfect. the athletic director. Report. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm. I'm. I just finished practice, so I'm coming off of the field. Uh, I just want to say that uh, it has been a very challenging time trying to get through all the sports, but I am very, very proud of the Steinmetz coaches and athletes for how hard that they have worked uh, this season. At the moment, we have eight active sports. Uh, we have two that are finishing up from what was called spring season. That would be um, football. With, they have two more games and girls volleyball, which goes for another full week. Um, and then we just had our boys soccer team made the playoffs, which was outstanding. They did lose in the first round to Lane, but they had a an unexpectedly great season. So we're really proud of them. Um, and we currently have, uh, if you're if you're near the, the the school at all, it's amazing to watch how many people are, how many teams are out there socially distanced, wearing masks. Uh, we've got baseball. They have a game today, so we're already seeing baseball games being played. Softball was outside practicing today. Both volleyball teams, boys and girls, were inside at the gym. We had boys and girls track outside. Football's practicing, and so is girls soccer. So we are we are hopping, and we are doing everything we can to follow all of the protocols because we have... Um, we know how important it is. We've had schools that have forfeited games already because if one person tests positive on your team, it shuts down your whole season. So um, we're really pleased at how well uh, we're working together. We have very strict protocols that we send to every opposing school when they come in. I watched the baseball team today, our opposing team, go up to door one. They checked in. They, they send us their rosters. They do the screener online. They have their temperature taken. And we're doing this for every team. We send our roster and pass list to every school. So I'm really pleased with how well everyone is working together. Our, our coaches, um, our players, the administration, our security, everybody. And now to add to that, we are allowing spectators. So that adds a new dimension. And it's exciting to see people outside watching, uh, watching our kids play. But again, they have to do the screener. They have to be on a pass list. So there's a lot that goes into this, but we're making it work for our kids. Today, I told my softball team, I said, hey, we get to practice tomorrow because my volleyball game was canceled and they were so excited. The kids are thrilled to be back out uh, on the courts, on the fields, um, uh, on the track. It's wonderful. Uh, again, eight sports is a lot to keep track of, but we're, we're doing it. So that's pretty much, I think, for athletics. All uh, We got new masks. All the kids have matching masks. Steinmetz ones, they look really sharp. Um, so it's, it's exciting. It's an exciting time, and uh, it gives the kids a sense of normalcy. Uh, thank you, Ms. Russo, uh, to yourself and the entire coaching uh that has been making this a, a huge success. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, Ms. Russo, I do have a question. Sure. Um, when there's a game, right, and you have issues, let's say, with the refs, right, with the mm -hmm. referees, that they're not doing uh, well in controlling, like, student, uh -huh. like, behavior and stuff, because the last football game. I know exactly um, what you're referencing. I was there. Yeah, so so I have a huge concern about that, and I was going to call the school directly, but I want to make sure that I am reaching out to the right person. So if we well, could talk offline, um, that would be can, great. But I do want to, we can, and I will happily do that, but I do want to address the fact that um, we evaluate all the officials. So through IHSA, head coaches get to evaluate officials, and they can be reprimanded for their actions. And so while... While the official has the right to throw a, a coach off the field, we also have a right to report their behaviors as well. And that absolutely should take place based on uh, there was just some uh, inappropriate behavior on the part of the other team. And yeah. it was disregarded. It was ignored by the official. And when our coach complained about it, 
he, the official turned it around on our coach and blamed him and threw him out of the game. So that's what happened. And yes, we absolutely can and will um, re- report that. So I'm glad that you brought that up because that's in everybody. We just talked about how everybody has to work together. That includes people that are spectators as well as the officials themselves. And they don't always behave themselves. Okay. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. And now, now we go into. Ms. Valentine. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I don't know if it's my computer breaking in and out, but uh, I redid, I looked at our numbers and everything. We do have seven. Uh, I didn't hear Ms. Hernandez uh, say present earlier. So we do have seven and we have a quorum. Okay, great. So I will go back to um, making a motion to approving the agenda as presented. I'll second that. Open for discussion. Close for discussion. Roll call vote. Mr. Armio? Yes. Ms. Valentine? Yes. Ms. Keelis is absent. Sergeant Davis, yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. De Jesus? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Sanchez is absent. Ms. Asuay is absent. Uh, Ms. Toledo is absent. Uh, Ms. Sergio is absent. And Ms. Cervantes is absent. Seven yes, no no's. Motion passed 513 p.m. Awesome. So the next item to vote on was to approve the minutes as presented. I know Master Sergeant Davis uh, emailed us all the minutes. I don't know if people had time to review, uh, but I want to uh, make a motion to approve March LSE meeting min- minutes. I second that. Open for discussion. Close for discussion. Roll call vote. Mr. Armillo? Yes. Ms. Valentine? Yes. Ms. Aquiles is absent. Sergeant Davis? Yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Dave Seuss? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. The other remaining members are absent. We have seven yes. No Motion pass at 5.14 p.m. Great. So we'll continue on with the agenda where we were we had left off. Um, we will go into our teacher report. Um, I don't have too much to add for the teacher report, except that I think while there is a, a large amount of nervousness about teachers returning to the classroom. I I think there's also a high level of excitement. I know that the students that are looking, that are coming back, some of them are just so excited. I have one young lady who's like, Russo, I cannot wait to see you every day or are the days that she's gonna be there. And, And I'm excited for that too. I think that as much as there's a nervousness about how do we make the technology work? And I think that we've been given a lot of information from our administration. We, we had some really good meetings today and lots of good questions came out. I'm sure Mr. Hadamio will address this, but I think that there's underneath the nervousness and I don't want to say fear. I think it's just nerves. I think we're all really excited. Again, that sense of normalcy, being around kids, being back in the building. It was exciting seeing staff members again that we hadn't seen in over a year. So I think that that's something really great. Uh, In addition, you know, we had the SAT yesterday, and I'm sure, again, Mr. Hadamio will address that. And I want to say congratulations to everyone who organized that. It just, it felt like it ran very smoothly. The kids are learning how to do the screener. They're learning how to be back in the building. And so, again, this sense of bringing back uh, Steinmetz to normal life, it feels really good. So I... I was hoping, I mean, I don't know, are we going to do something? And again, I might be jumping the gun here. It feels like we should do something fun on the first day for both shift A and shift B, just so the kids know how excited we are to have them back. Because I am, as much as I'm 
nervous and, and like, oh, I'm looking at one or two kids. It, it is exciting. So that's basically all I have. And I won't say much more, but I, I agree. And I was going to say some of the same things that Ms. Russo stated. And I would say that the teachers are looking forward to getting back into the classroom. Uh, actually, uh, just coming into the building for the first time, I, I think that there was no major you know, concern as it relates to uh, some of the uh, uh, COVID uh, protections. Uh, I do think, like Ms. Russo said, there is some nervousness to getting back into the classroom. It's been uh, you know, uh, quite a long time. Uh, the nervousness blended learning would look when it comes to teaching both you know remote and in the classroom uh we had we got a lot of instruction today from uh mr uh Harmio and mrs swellies and so i think we feel a little bit more comfortable what we're what we're doing uh could we need some more use a little bit more time uh yes but i definitely think that with uh, uh making sure that everything is being prepared it was nice to hear that uh uh, the technology, individual tech, individual went around and, and to all the computers. And so uh, the ESPs that was here every day made it possible and made it easier for us to transition back into uh, our normal role, uh, which is in the classroom. And I'd like to just thank Mr. Harmiel for that. Agreed. Thank you, um, both Ms. Russo um, and Master Sergeant Davis for your update. Um, exciting to hear um, we're prepared and and uh, the support is giving to, to our teachers. So thank you for your leadership to Mr. Jaramillo and our assistant principals for making that happen. Um, anything else on teacher report? Nope, that's it for me. Okay, now we go to non-teacher reports. Hi guys. Um, so to piggyback off of uh, what Ms. Russo, Master Sergeant, I'm sure what Mr. Jaramillo is going to get to say with his principal's report, um, the ESPs and other staff members in the building are uh, trying to work together to make it as safe as possible for not only our students uh, to come back, but also the teachers, right? We want to make them feel as comfortable as possible. And the other day was a huge step because we haven't seen them and they haven't seen us. And, you know, uh, some of us look different, and they're like, man, I haven't seen you in, I don't know how many, how many, what you call it, have you been doing this or doing that, and how's this, and how's that? It was very, very nice to see a lot of the faces that we saw the other day, and uh, a couple of people actually needed some direction. I was like, man, I forgot where my classroom was. That's how long it's been that our teachers haven't been in the classroom. So, you know, we're trying to get them back uh, with all the sense of normalcy that we can, obviously, right? Um when it comes to our students, we were super excited. I think we were more excited than they were seeing us uh, the other day. And in, in my case, I forgot how overwhelming of a feeling it is to see 300 students come in. And I was like, whoa, I felt swarmed, but in a good way, you know? Uh, so it brought, it, it's obviously gonna bring back a lot of life uh, to the building and to our staff and our faculty that have just been with one another in the building or um, socially distanced or we're having meetings over, over um, Google Meets and stuff like that. Um, huge steps we're taking the other day. We're trying to do our best to plan out um, uh, the return for our kids on Monday. You know, we've had several meetings about the entry process to try to make it as safe as possible and to try to make it as efficient as possible. But obviously we know it's gonna be, you know, an uphill battle just like with anything new, right? Um, I think the most difficult part is going to be, you know, keeping the kids um, at a safe distance from one another. But I think with the uh, the couple people that we're going to have in the front, we're going to have a pretty strong uh, anchor, and uh, we'll be able to push through as, as much as possible. Um, uh, to piggyback off, off of uh, Ms. Russo for the sports and Ms. Ms. Valentin, like you guys know, I am the football coach, and, yes, we played the other day. And I'm going to first start saying that, our kids didn't get to an extent that the other students did. Now, our kids were not saints, but our kids did not get to a point where it was disrespect and over the limit, basically. Because, you know, I, I feel like, and I think Ms. Russo could back me on this, that we don't, we don't teach that method, you know? Um, a lot of things were said from the opposite side towards, towards us and towards our students that should have been taken care of by the referees, which were not. And one of our one of our coaches did get ejected for it. And um, 
he knew he was going to get ejected, but he was doing it more so our students knew that we have their back. And sometimes we have to sacrifice ourselves for them because if we don't, then they're going to take whatever issues they have into their own hands, and that's not something that we teach, obviously. Um, on another note, we played a great game. We fell short, but um, we are very proud of our kids because with the, with the low amount of students that we have for a football team, you know, they fight every single week. Um, we're in week four right now, and we're, we're limping along, but we're, we're trying to make it the best season as possible. And then it, um, it helped a lot that the other day we actually had spectators and they, ha they had some backup from family members and friends besides just myself and our coaching staff. And I want to give a huge shout-out. If you guys see her in the hallways or send her an email or whatever to one of our track coaches, Miss um, uh, Alicia Urquizo. She's a past student. She's an alum. Uh, she's actually been our uh, paramedic for all of our home games and has donated her, her time. So, you know, if you guys see her or, you know, run into her, just make sure you give her an air high five like we're supposed to right now because she's saved us so much this year. And also – Absolutely. To Ms., to Ms., and also to Ms. Russo because she is always there to do check-in for us. And I know how annoyed it could be sometimes, but we got to do what we got to do. And that's how we do it at Simon's. We try to help each other out as much as we can. Um, aside from that, I'm nervous for Monday, but I'm ready for Monday. <laughs> that's all I got. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. De Jesus. Your report um, energizes me uh, just to hear the excitement. Um, you guys um, will be fine on Monday. You, you, you've been uh, not resting uh, during this pandemic. You all have been showing up and really being supportive to the Steinmans, uh, not just the Steinmans community, but the overall community. So I think you guys have a system and, and a great working team that will be successful for our students um, on Monday. Um, on another note, as a parent, I want to thank you because... My son did tell me you have had a long conversation with the team about their behavior and what was your expectation from them. So I think that that, that is why that day uh, they did not join into the mess from the other team, right? Because they had heard uh, clear expectations from you and were pretty powerful. So I thank you for that leadership. Uh, because we want to make sure that our students are learning sportsmanship and learning how to respect each other um, during games. Uh, so, so thank you for that. Thank you. Um, P PPLC report. There's really not much, uh, uh, but uh, we had an opportunity to talk to uh, you know a couple of teachers. And uh, well, especially me, and I just say this last comment, but this comment is not really on us as a school, it's on us as a district. So the communication of us coming back, there was some uh, heartburn with the teachers, uh, but you know, especially, and Mr. Harmeal tells us all the time, as soon as he get the information, he sent it to us. And so just not knowing uh, what when we're coming in the next day, those things, and just getting the information at the last minute. And even though we knew these days was, it was common, but there was a lot of talk on the news and certain things, and you hear things from other schools, and 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 it was all rumor. So rumors actually, you know, brains about you know confusion, and there was a lot of confusion amongst the teachers in relates to our first day back. But it was not a school issue; it was a CPS uh, issue. Thank you, thank you for that, Master Sergeant Davis. I think we've seen that through the whole process of of coming back. Uh, Mr. Adamio, question for you. The next two reports are CIWP um, and budgets. Are, are you going to incorporate those reports in your principal report? No, um, I was going to focus more on the reopening. Okay. Did you want to give a quick update on either, either of those? Uh, well, we could discuss the, uh, the internal accounts during the, um, the review for the uh, internal accounts approval for the budget transfers. Um, but I, it, it's up to you. Okay, we, we could do that. Um, community report. Uh, that's usually uh, Mr. Keyless. I don't know okay. if he has anything, but I mean, I could add that uh, uh, we did receive a um, a concern from uh, citizens uh, regarding. Um, unfortunately, there lately there has been uh, some vehicles. 
uh, who have decided to use our front campus as a cut through um, instead of driving around the block uh, the way they should using the streets. And uh, we do have a wide sidewalk. Um, unfortunately, people have decided to use that as a cut through instead of going around. And, you know, I know, understand that right now students haven't been around, so maybe they feel a little more liberty to go down, but it's concerning because, uh, you know, it concerns the safety of our students and of the community who may be walking down or playing with their children or visiting our campus in the afternoons or any time of day. Um, so it is an issue that we're looking at to see if we could get improved signage. Uh, we, we've considered putting up some kind of uh, barriers um, in the past and there used to be some, but uh, it uh, was a, an issue because it does um, inhibit the, uh, the ability for a fire truck or other emergency vehicles to come on the front campus of the school. Um, but we are working with uh, the local officials, uh, safety and security facilities uh, to discuss some possible options with signage and other things. And hopefully we can resolve this issue so that it doesn't become a safety issue um, going forward, a bigger safety issue. Thank you, Mr. Jaramillo, um, for giving us that update um, and for working with all stakeholders to try to get to a solution. Uh, Facility and Grounds Committee. Yeah, I'll, I'll give an update, um, if I may. Um, right now, uh, as you can see, our grounds are being prepared uh, with, the, you know, landscapers been coming around and uh, doing spring cleanups and different things. Um, we are now in the last phases of our lab, STEAM lab updates, and we're very excited. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, we actually have a uh, somewhat semifinal walkthrough in order to do the final punch list um, and to review the work that has been done. We're very excited uh, about the way uh, it looks, the work that has been put in. Uh, it really is going to make our, our be a, a gem or a highlight of our school and we can't wait to uh, let the students come in and, and use the space and it will be uh, pretty much ready just in time for the students to come back so we're excited about that and we're grateful for um, CPS and the construction crew who's been working uh, tirelessly to make sure that they can have this ready for our students to return. Um, more exciting news um, we're finally, after many, many years of uh, advocating for the upgrade of our fire alarm system, we are finally receiving the upgrade um, that we've been uh, requesting. Um, so this is gonna basically take uh, up time now and throughout the summer in which uh, there's gonna be a crew going around the building, uh, putting in um, different sounding alarms, uh, sensors, a new panel, uh, new signals, uh, I believe strobes as well in certain areas. And uh, this is really going to modernize our system, which, you know, has had many challenges with, uh, with uh, sending um, breakdowns or false alarms or different things. So we're really excited to see the infrastructure and the investment in the infrastructure. And I'm very grateful for that. And one other area that we put in our 2020 vision plan uh, about maybe seven years ago um, is the upgrade of the stairwells. Finally, finally, it has been approved. Uh, the work should start this summer. Um, there will be a crew painting and um, refinishing all of our stairwells um, to remove all the chipped paint, all the, uh, the railings uh, to clean them up and make sure that every stairwell is, um, is properly painted and, and chip free and uh, safe for um, our students and visitors. So it's great seeing the infrastructure investments um, and, and seeing the, the great work that's going on in the building. It's uplifting for our students and staff to see uh, the investment in them, in their their space. Um, and it's, it's also motivating to see all the great things that are, are happening. Uh, thank you. That is great news, um, all the upgrades and every, everything that's um, happening. Mr. Adamillo, since it's harder to get in the building, would it be like once these projects are completed, maybe we could do a post on Facebook so everyone knows what's happening and the upgrades? Because I know we haven't been able to kind of 
see all that, um, you know, all the great things that, that are happening in these classrooms. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, we, we do, uh, I have reported it out at the LSE meetings previously um, as progress has gone on and uh, we do po post occasionally, but uh, we could increase our social media presence to include more pictures of the finished work. Uh, you know, as you know, a lot of these projects take a long time and uh, we haven't really been in the building per se, you know, as a full staff, but uh, we'll definitely go ahead and increase social media presence. Awesome for the excitement. All right, we'll go off to principal report. Thank you very much. Um, give me one second here and I am going to present on the same page. So if anyone needs, here's our contact information. Feel free to reach out. Um, our Twitter, our, our, our school website, our Facebook uh, is not on there, but our school phone number as well. Um, so as you know, currently it's been going day to day, but there's ongoing discussion between uh, CPS, the high school task force and the Chicago Teachers Union. And although there's no official agreement at this time, hopefully there's one soon, uh, it sounds like discussions have been productive. So I recommend that everybody watches their emails you've been doing, Facebook, media outlets, uh, for the latest information. And as soon as we can, as soon as we receive an update uh, that's accurate and reliable, we'll make sure uh, to make it available to everyone. So, you know, at, at this moment, um, April 19th is going to be the first day of the fourth quarter. Um, and it's the targeted for students to return to the classrooms. Um, a return to high school classrooms uh, should be made available to all students, and that's part of the criteria that CPS and CTU agreed upon. Um, and they should be with their assigned teachers. Um, instructional models varied between schools due to the enrollment and capacity for social distancing. So there was various models that uh, schools qualified for and could choose. Um, the model that Steinmetz uh, will use will be may be different than a model a smaller school or larger school may use for return to in-person or, or hybrid learning. So if you have children at multiple high schools, it is possible that their scheduling models will look different. Um, and we will discuss our models in, in a few uh, slides. So what I would like to do is talk a little bit about our hybrid schedule. So basically at Steinmetz, we're using a hybrid and remote model. So a few weeks ago, CPS sent out a survey to uh, parents asking whether or not their child would opt in or opt out of in-person learning. And for students who opted in, uh, they will be following the hybrid model. For students who opted out, they will be following the remote model. So the deadline to choose was um, the 23rd of March. Um, I believe we were in about the 75, 80% uh, contact rate uh, of being able to reach out to parents and families to find out uh, what models they selected. So in the hybrid model for students who opted in to in-person learning, students will attend school in person two days a week and remotely online for three days a week. For students who opted out, they will remain at home five days per week and continue in online learning. So families who chose remote will remain remote until the end of the school year. And families who chose hybrid will remain in hybrid or they can switch to remote at any time. But if a family who chose hybrid switches to remote, they may not switch back to hybrid for the remainder of the school year. So families who did not respond to the survey, uh, those students were automatically placed in remote. So let's take a, a little closer look at what uh, a daily schedule looks like. So for students who are remote or students who opted out and chose remote learning, their schedule will remain the same as to what students are currently used to. Uh, students will engage in learning online Monday through Friday, um, as you can see on the screen. So pretty much nothing changes um, to as to what the students are used to. For the hybrid opt-in schedule, um, for students who, choo who, who chose to opt in or families who chose to opt in and chose the hybrid learning model, students will attend in-person school two days a week and remote for three days a week. Students will be assigned to sh either shift A or shift B. Shift A will attend in-person on Monday and Tuesday. 
and shift B will attend in person on Thursday and Friday. So I have a visual to, to, make, to help this make a little more sense. Here's an example of what a weekly schedule will look like for hybrid learning for shift A and B. So if you know um, that all in-person classes at Steinmetz will have no more than 15 students in a classroom with the exception of lunch. So if you look at shift A, uh, those students, if they're assigned shift A, will come in on Monday and Tuesday and shift B on Thursday and Friday. Student schedules were sent out um, on 4-7. They were available 4-7 via student email accounts and schedules are available in Aspen uh, if parents or students would like to visit the schedule and see what it looks like. The bell schedule for all learning uh, will continue will continue to follow our regular bell schedule for both remote and hybrid learners. Uh, students in hybrid learning will join their classmates in remote learning each class period via Google Meets that the and that the teacher may project on the screen. A big question that comes up all the time is uh, basically what are the safety protocols? What are the measures that we've taken as a school to make sure students uh, are safe? So. When we look at our safety protocols and PPE, everyone in the building must wear a mask. I mean, this is a, a mandate that everybody is pretty much used to at this point. Uh, but face shields are allowed, but you still must wear a mask uh, under the face shield. Um, six feet social distancing is expected everywhere. Hand sanitizer stations have been installed in every classroom, common areas, bathrooms, hallways, and entries. And all uh, I'm sorry, all classrooms are equipped with a HEPA air purifier. Restrooms and water fountains, all restrooms will be available, but due to social distancing, not all sinks or stalls will be usable. So sinks that are not usable will have green shrink wrap draped over them. Stalls and hand washing sinks will also have green shrink wrap or marked with a sticker stating it's not usable. Water fountains, are only allowed to, uh, to refill water bottles. Drinking from the fountain like people usually do will not be allowed. So students uh, have the option to bring their own water bottle so they can refill them. Um, some of our water fountains have been retrofitted with a, uh, a, a water filling spout on some of the older water fountains. If any student becomes sick during the school day, we have what's called a care room um, where he or she will wait for a parent or guardian to pick them up. So um, it's basically a room that will be staffed with school personnel uh, who will be with your child, take their temperature, put in the report, call you, let them know, let you know, you know, your child is uh, not feeling well, they should be picked up and so on and so forth. So. Uh, they will be with somebody who's familiar and knows them and will help them uh, to make sure that they're taken care of until they can be picked up. The health screener must be completed um, each day before coming to Steinmetz, uh, whether it's for staff members or, or visitors or our students. There's a health screener online and everyone has to fill that out. It has to be completed on the day the students will enter the school building uh, and the screener opens at 5 a.m. Failing the health screener will deny entry. So uh, a person can't do it the night before for the next day. You have to wait uh, until the next, the actual day that you're gonna go in the building and it opens up at 5 a.m. So what does entering the building look like? So as I mentioned, uh, the health screener, um, before coming to school, uh, each student will need, or each visitor, anyone, needs to complete the CPS health screener. If you pass the screener, you're able to come to the school. If you fail the screener, you must stay at home and call the absence into the attendance office at 773-534-3027. So just to reiterate, the health screener must be done the day of and opens at 5 a.m. each day. It's important that students do the health screener before coming to the school, one, to, to make the process more efficient, but if the student fails the health screener, that way they know and they don't make the trip all the way um, to the school. All students and visitors are required to wear a mask on CPS property. 
Uh, when walking into the building uh, at the main entrance, students must be wearing their masks properly, which requires masks to be worn. So they fully cover the mouth and nose as seen in the picture with the green check mark. Um, thank you, Mr. DeJesus, for serving as our model and showing uh, everyone what proper mask wearing looks like. I love it. <laughs> thank you. Um, in addition, students and visitors will be required to sanitize their hands upon entering and hand sanitizer stations are just past the security screener. So as part of our security check, the uh, students, visitors' temperatures will be taken. Any temperature above 100.4 degrees will result in the student or visitor being sent to the, uh, well, I'm sorry, the student being sent to the care room uh, where the parent be notified immediately to pick them up. At this point, we will verify that you completed and passed your health screener, and then you can go through the regular security check as everyone is, is used to. As you can see here, once you go through a security check, um, you will then go to the next area, which as soon as you pass security check, there are hand sanitizers at every entrance, at, at every line uh, for students to use. So there's hand sanitizers in every classroom, bathroom, entrance in the lunchroom. Every time you move from space to space, uh, you can use the hand sanitizer. Uh, we make sure that um, people are going around checking these to make sure they're filled and they're working. Um, and so we uh, want to make sure that sanitizer is, is available for everyone. I cannot, I cannot stress how many emails I've received asking about the uniform uh, and dress code. So one question comes up and up all over and over again, as I said, is whether or not students will be required to wear the Steinmetz school uniform shirt um, during hybrid learning. Uh, Steinmetz will follow the standard CPS dress code and students will not be required to wear or purchase the Steinmetz uniform at this time. But as soon as we return to a regular school year, the uniform policy will go back into effect. Navigating the building. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what it looks like to go around the building from room to room or space to space. So during hybrid learning, lockers will not be used. Students will need to bring their materials with them from class to class. For PE classes, locker rooms will not be used for PE classes. So it's very important that students bring the supplies they need um, and that they're ready to, to be able to go from class to class with their supplies. Seating in the classrooms. Um, although classrooms may be set up and look like a full regular classroom, only certain de desks will be usable. So desks the students can sit at will be marked to maintain six foot distancing. Uh, these green marks on the screen are not the marks that we're putting on the desk, but this is just to give you an idea of how desks could be uh, set up to space, to be spaced properly in the classroom. Uh, some suggest suggestions have been take out all the desks and put them in the hallways and just leave the ones that we can social distance on and so forth that are needed. Uh, but that will create another issue in which Students who are walking down the halls will now be forced to one side of the hall or the other, minimizing their uh, spacing as they're transitioning. So the best uh, option at this point is to keep the desk in the room, set up the room in a, in a classic uh, setup, and then just mark the desk where students can sit. Technologies. Uh, students must bring their Chromebook or laptop with them to school every day. Uh, please. Make sure the devices are charged each day. We'll not be able to provide charging stations during the school day to everyone. And we don't have the ability to provide backup technology for students for safety and logistical reasons. Um, this question has come up a lot about what if a student doesn't have a Chromebook? What if they don't have the device they need? Well, fortunately, um, earlier in the year and uh, last year, we advocated um, to get as many laptops as possible for our students to meet the need of everyone that requested one so they can receive one. Uh, some families uh, wanted to make sure that they were considerate and, and they did not elect to uh, obtain a, a school issue Chromebook um, and they had their own device and they said, you know what, thank you, but no thank you, we'll use our own device. And some of those students may be returning now. So fortunately, uh, based off of the numbers and and the uh, selections that were made of who's returning in person, um, based off of that data, CPS is going to provide us with 
Chromebooks for students uh, who may need them who are in person. Um, so that's why it's important. We, we sometimes we get the um, people inquiring, students inquiring, or parents whether or not they could switch their child from group A to B or back and forth or opt in or opt out. Um, and we had to set a hard deadline and CPS actually extended that. Part of that was to, in order to accommodate the planning. Uh, there, has, there had to be uh, equipment purchased. There had to be um, you know, room set up. There had to be uh, technology um, acquired. So all of that is based off of those numbers. So we should have enough uh, devices for those students who will be in person uh, for them to be able to have a device. So because part of that is CPS does not allow um, individual students to bring their personal technology and use it on the CPS network. So that's why it's important that those students who we already know who have been assigned a laptop or Chromebook, we can now assign them one uh, during remote learning. And, and that will happen during um, their first week. Lunch. Lunch is, a, is another area of, of concern for everyone, uh, rightfully so. Um, our goal is to make sure students are safe and their schedules are minimally impacted. That was the goal of CPS is to make sure that students pretty much have their same schedule with no little to no disruption. Um, students will eat lunch during their assigned lunch period as assigned on their current schedules. We are going to put 50 students max at um, scheduled per lunch period in the lunchroom. Um, all of our periods, because we have the A and B schedule, we have two different groups of students coming in at, at, at a time, um, you know, Monday and Tuesday or Thursday and Friday, that allowed us to basically comfortably put the maximum amount of students, 50 or less in the lunchroom. Uh, the freshman lunch period uh, is about 55 students, and we've uh, made an alternative space on another room adjacent to the um, to the lunchroom in order to place the five extra students just in case uh, there's a need um, and we go we don't want to go over to 50. So we have a space for them for everyone to be comfortable and still have a full lunch uh, experience. Lunches will be socially distanced to ensure safety. Tables will be clearly marked with a label indicating where students may sit. Um, there's a few different options on how we could do that. We could put in a configuration of three per table or two, depending on uh, the size of the table. Hand sanitizers provided from dispensers for students uh, will be required to sanitize their hands when they come in and, and, and eat lunch. And students must remain seated during their lunch period to, and keep masks on when they're not eating or drinking. So just like a restaurant, if you're not eating or drinking, you should have your mask on. Uh, but while you're eating and drinking, you can definitely uh, remove your mask. And dismissal, at the end of the day, all students must leave the building. Unfortunately, hanging out with friends is not allowed in the school building or on school property uh, at this moment. I understand, you know, school is, is a hub where everybody wants to hang out and be with their friends, but we have to really uh, make sure the students are social distancing and not putting each other at risk. And the protocols for athletics uh, will be communicated through the coaches. Uh, Ms. Russo and I and the admin team, we've been working very closely with the coaches, and our coaches have been great. Uh, really enforcing the protocols, making sure students are, even though they may see other examples where, you know, when they go to other places where the rules are not followed as strictly, our students have been really good at adapting to the rules and it really hasn't been an issue. It's, it's not an issue of resistance or why do I have to do this or why I have to do that. Students are, are just happy to be back and able to play and they've uh, very graciously have been following the rules. Of course, you know, there's always a little few reminders, but uh, they've been really good at, at following that. So I will stop here for this part of the presentation. I just want to answer any questions uh, that the council may have um, regarding reopening before I go to the next part of principal's report. I have a question. Sure. In between during the transition period, are those classrooms going to be wiped, the desk going to be wiped down? for the next group of um, kids to come in? And it's um, same thing with the lunch tables? The lunch tables will be wiped. Uh, they're always wiped uh, between uh, lunch periods, uh, but not between class periods. We will have a bucket of wipes available in every classroom and hand sanitizer. Um, every student as they enter the room should sanitize their hands. 
Um, every visitor into the room should sanitize their hands, but they will not be wiped. I would be willing to bet that most teachers, if there is a bucket of wipes, will wipe down their desks. I, I think just for their own sake and their, I, I would be willing to bet that most teachers will do that without even being told to. Or maybe even having the, the students wipe them down right before they leave. It's just that um, I know you're mentioning the hand sanitizer and it just seems like it's a lot, right? And I know it's safety um, for safety reasons, but there's children out there um, that have, because of the alcohol content in the hand sanitizer that will dry out their hands and cause the children to break out in rashes. I know this because my, my youngest child um, has this. So it's, she washes her hands and tries to use a less alcohol-based sanitizer. So I know that you're requiring every single classroom, but um, if it, it would be helpful to wipe down the desk um, right before dismissal would probably be a, a good option also. It's something we could advise teachers to do. Um, and and um, like Ms. Russo said, I think um, most people will probably take the, the proper measures that they feel most comfortable with in, uh, in, in trying to do that. But um, we will try to reduce uh, the, the spread of germs as much as possible. Reality is if you know everyone is wearing their mask and sanitizing, and, and I agree because I also have that problem with my hand. I, I've been having cracks and breakouts on, on my hands um, from all the sanitizer. And, and um, sometimes the one with aloe helps if, if I could find it, but um, I definitely agree with you and uh, we'll definitely recommend it to the teachers. I think that most teachers would be willing to do that. They'll stand at the door then with the tub and say, take a, take a wipe, wipe down your desk. You know, as you come in, we do that at volleyball practice at the end of practice, every girl takes a wipe. We wipe, they wipe down every ball between games. Every girl takes wipes and wipes down all of the chairs uh, so that we sanitize between the varsity and sophomore games at my softball practice today. Uh, every girl gets a wipe. We wipe down the helmets, the bats, before we put everything away. So if the wipes are there, we can train the kids to to do that. That's easy. And I, uh, I'm very appreciative of the amount of buckets of wipes that we've been provided by CPS. Uh, For I have sure. to be honest that sometimes I think it's a little overkill, but uh, you know, I know Athletics uh, received the shipment the other day. They probably needed only maybe a box or two. Uh, but oh received, my God. I think it was eight boxes of uh, <laughs> yeah. wipes, but we do go through them. So we do. Uh, CPS has been pretty good about uh, providing those wipes. So we definitely will make them uh, available as they're being used and we will let the teachers know. And, and, and I think they will probably take it upon themselves to, to want to do that or, or work with students to do that. So thank you for the suggestion. I just wanna thank you for um, the presentation. I think I love the... Um, the, it, the pictures, right, that really show our students how to wear the mask and what's going to be the process. Are you um, going to maybe print some of those pictures to put throughout the school, right, so they know what's the proper uh, mask wearing, right? Because I think we all start wearing our mask and little by little it goes down, right? And I think, um, you know, just to have some of those pictures and, and, and I think they're great pictures, Mr. De Jesus. Um, will be helpful uh, as well for our students. Yeah, I think it's a great suggestion. I, I appreciate it. I know Mr. Jesus is always willing to uh, to help out wherever he can. Um, you know, I, I want to say too and just thank uh, Mr. Svalnes, Mr. De Jesus, uh, Ms. Williams, and and uh, the other ESPs, Rolando, Angel, and others who who uh, have really they're the ones that put this together. They're they're the ones that went around the school taking pictures really thinking about what does a day in a life look like and what would kids need to know in order to make them comfortable and, and um, so that they know what it's going to look like so it won't be as scary and so that the procedures are clear. So uh, it took a lot of people to collaborate to make these presentations. They make it easy for me to just come up here and just go through it, but they, uh, they really are the rock stars who have helped put all this together. Easy work compared to everything else. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Mr. Adamio, another question. So let's say we start uh, school Monday, right? The kids, um, there's a classroom that maybe they t something happens, right? Someone's positive. Has CPS talked about what's going to be 
the process for that group that's together or, you know, like what, it, what does that look like? That's a great question. Um, the, the process has been changing as we go along. Uh, so I'll just give you a, a brief description of the general process. Uh, just even as far as um, up to today, right, as we joined the meeting, I seen there, there we had some emails that came in with updated processes. So uh, we'll have to look at that and I'm sure it'll continue to change. But basically what we have is a care room. So if a, sh a student is showing symptoms um, or is complaining of symptoms, uh, the teacher can let them know or the student can say, hey, you know, I'm not feeling well, and they will be taken to the care room. Uh, somebody in the care room will be wearing PPE. Uh, they will take their temperature, you know, screen, uh, do kind of like the health screener, do, do those questions and call the parent. After that, um, it's really up to the, um, it's, it's really up to all of us as individuals to make sure that we're being honest with the health screener. Uh, if a student has the symptoms and um, they answer the health screener uh, accordingly, then they will have to stay home and, and quarantine for a little while. Um, but they also will, if they go get tested and they test positive, uh, which is what I think you're asking about, uh, if they test positive, they have to self-report to Chicago Public Schools, let them know. And at that point, CPS will send out some communications regarding who had direct contact, which individuals should um, quarantine. Um, and it's based off of, you know, who has had shots already, uh, who has not, and uh, what exposure, whether it's a team or what environment the student um, what exposed others. So um, it all really depends on, on a particular situation, but there's a, a lot of different steps and considerations. Um, but the student themselves will have to quarantine and um, those students who were in direct contact, if CPS deems it is, uh, and the contact tracers, I should say, deem it is uh, part of the individuals they have to notify, they will notify those individuals uh, separately. It, there will no longer be those, uh, you know, as there was in the beginning of this situation where they sent out whole building emails to the whole community. Uh, these are specific emails to individuals saying, uh, you've been exposed, uh, you will need to uh, quarantine for so many days, and so on and so forth. And I know it changes all the time. So thank you for, you know, keeping us up to date. Um, is this presentation that you showed us today, would it be available in our Facebook and our web and our um and our website? So parents that may, you know, didn't join tonight's meeting or won't see the meeting could see this presentation because it'll be helpful uh, for the school community to have it. Yeah, we're, we're going to upload the uh, slides. Uh, we actually did have a parent town hall uh, last week on Thursday, I believe it was, uh, with this same presentation. And uh, everyone was invited, but mostly uh, parents uh, and students who uh, are who elected hybrid um, are the ones that attended. But um, we will make the slides available um, on our website. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions about reopening? Because I know there's a lot of questions. All right. If you have any questions come up, please feel free to email me um, and I'll do my best to try to answer your questions. I want to keep this, uh, this short because I, I know that sometimes the reports go on way too long. Um, so I just want to give an update for the other pressing issue that I know has been on everyone's mind. Um, this past Monday, uh, the senior class officers met uh, to discuss uh, the graduation and their ideas and what they would like to see and so on and so forth. And so um, I wasn't a part of the conversation, uh, but the admin team and, and a few other teachers were part of it. And uh, what, they, the, what they report out to me is that basically there seemed to have been some confusion um, from students as far as what exactly happened last year, what the expectations are for this year. And uh, some thought that maybe it was just a drive-through ceremony and that was it. And uh, once they found out all the things that were involved for last year, they felt better about uh, the graduation. So I just wanted to clarify that last year, there's, there's a few different things. We did a graduation ceremony and we did a graduation celebration. The ceremony was the actual event that was online uh, it was a formal um, uh, ceremony. We had uh, recordings from different speakers. We had the color guard. 
Uh, we had different class officers speak. And then we had the pictures of the graduates provided by the uh, yearbook company and the photographers. Um, and as much as possible, we put up those pictures with the students' names and called each individual student's name and put it online. That's what the formal graduation usually looks like in person. And we just made it in an online format. So that was the formal part of the celebration. Now the informal celebration, I should say that was a formal part of the graduation ceremony itself. Uh, the graduation celebration, that was a new event that we added uh, because we wanted it to be able to give that community feel and that, that, that feeling of being able to rejoice with your classmates and families. So that's where we did the actual drive through for lack of better words or drive through celebration. And that was new um, after the event a lot of the uh, staff and students, uh, the graduates, they were like, that was awesome. That's something uh, they would like to continue as a tradition each year, if possible, They, in addition to the grad formal ceremony. Um, so we're going to continue doing that this year as a celebration, allow families to come up in their cars, uh, you know, and, and cheer their graduates on, announce their name, and so on and so forth. But the thing that was you know, we, we want to take it up a notch, right? Each year should be special. And so we're trying to figure out something different that we can do. Um, and so one of the things that, that is really pressing for this year group, I've received emails from a few students and, and the class officers have talked about it, which is they really want that uh, feel of walking across stage. And, and they're, they're not, or having some kind of formal walking across stage, being able to take pictures in their cap and gown and receive a diploma, whether it's shaking hands or, I mean, not shaking hands, a fist bump or with people in it or not, they want to be able to walk across some stage. So we are uh, looking at different suggestions on how to make that happen. Uh, the feeling was uh, whether if that's at, in the actual building or whether that's outside, one of the things that had been discussed is this year we had, this past year we had pictures of the graduates. And so what that we talked about is maybe uh, in, uh, doing this ahead of time, inviting the graduates to come up in their cap and gown and just get a snippet of them walking across stage and announcing their name and then putting all the clips together for the formal uh, ceremony. Um, another option was maybe just setting up a stage outside on the front campus to allow people to come up and take pictures uh, and so that students can take their own pictures um, and and have that feeling of walking across the stage. It's such a, uh, a milestone in the experience of what it means to be a graduate that they really, they're advocating to, to see that happen in some shape or form. Um, just today, as I was mentioning how policies change, just today, as I thought I, I had this presentation for you, uh, the policies that were released a few weeks ago that we met with the team with and, uh, and met with the senior class officers, but just today, revised policies came out. So when I wrote this presentation, I wrote uh, revised policies will be released this week. They actually came out today before this meeting. Uh, so we need to go through those policies and see what exactly has changed um, and see, um, I, I believe they've become a little bit more open to a few different options. Um, so that's kind of where we're at, but I really wanted to make sure because I know graduation is on a lot of people's minds as one of the uh, end of the year activities that uh, is so important to our school. So we want to make sure the experience is special and that we continue to celebrate our graduates and their accomplishments. All right. Um, that concludes the, the presentation. Um, I wanted to keep it short and simple. I, I think the, the real, uh, the real focus here is, you know, looking at what is opening going to look like. Um, our support staff has been working very hard to put together uh, boxes of supplies for teachers, in addition to bags filled with, uh, you know, sanitizer and and uh, masks for students, masks for the teachers, and the different supplies they will need. Um, uh, our teachers came in and helped out with the SAT, um, as as it was mentioned earlier, and uh, you know. Uh, again, our, our team has really been doing everything possible to make sure that the welcome back um, is as stress-free as possible. Uh, today, we had a, um, 
a meeting with all the staff. We walked through what some of the procedures were. We went through a presentation similar to this. We talked about what this is going to look like for Monday. We encouraged them to work together as department members and as teachers uh, on Friday to see what this is going to look like so that they can do a dry run before Monday. Uh, we've been working with the tech team. We have deliveries coming in uh, of cameras and extension cords and different things from CPS and stuff that we've purchased uh, to be able to support teachers. Uh, we have been preparing the rooms. Our custodial staff has been fantastic, having to move desks into gyms and lunchrooms and out and back and forth um, and setting up the rooms to make sure everything is ready and clean uh, and ready to receive our students. Um, we feel really good about uh, opening on Monday, hopefully, um, and we just want to make sure that, you know, we're ready as much as possible. We know there will probably be some bumps in the road, uh, but I think we're in the best position possible for opening on Monday. And that concludes the uh, principal's report. Thank you so much, Mr. Jaramillo, for your report, um, for your leadership. Um, now we will be going, um, sorry, I need to look at my agenda here. Uh, we will be going uh, to budget transfers, Mr. Adamio. Thank you. Um, so the budget transfers, the document was sent to you uh, ahead of time. Um, as you can see, most of the transfers there are for the, uh, the transfer funds um, to bucket lines in order uh, to be able to provide funding for the uh, SPED department work reduction load. So the, this is funding that is made available to our SPED department uh, each year in order to uh, allow them to uh, work on student IEPs um, and to make sure that they have the time necessary so it's not taken away from class time uh, as much as possible, but uh, basically to help uh, with the amount of work that they do to be able to um, reduce that workload or at least be compensated for the amount of time that they spend working on IEPs and preparing them for meetings. Um, so that's basically what that is. Um, and this is something that we do every year, um, which is provided to us. Uh, we just need to make sure that the funding is moved into a pointer line, uh, I'm sorry, bucket so that uh, it can be used uh, by our SPED department. Any questions about the uh, budget transfers as presented? Okay, um, I guess I can make a motion to uh, approve the uh, budget transfers um, as presented, as sent to, to everyone. I second. I think we may need to wait for Vanessa to rejoin us. Oh, did we lose her? Yeah, I think so. Uh oh, okay. Thank you, sorry, thank you for pointing out. I didn't notice that. Okay, we'll, we'll give her a second to see if she can uh, rejoin us. There we go. She's back. I'm sorry? So sorry. Oh, no problem. The wonderful world of technology we, we've all been dealing with it yes yeah, so did we did someone second uh the motion to approve i'm sorry i i got kicked out yeah no problem so yeah there was a motion i made the motion i believe it was seconded by master sergeant was that correct and open for discussion now master sergeant did you second it Oh, yes, I did. Open for discussion. Close for discussion. Roll call vote. Mr. Harmio? Yes. Ms. Valentine? 
Yes. Ms. Aquiles is absent. Sergeant Davis, yes. Go pass. Ms. Lopez. I hope you can ask. Yes. Ms. Russo. Yes. Mr. De Jesus. Yes. Ms. Hernandez. Yes. Ms. Sanchez is absent. Ms. Oswego is absent. Ms. Toledo is absent. Ms. Sir is absent. And Ms. Cervantes is absent. Seven yes, no no. Motion passed 6 12 p.m. Okay, now we move on to our internal accounts. Um, so the internal accounts uh, reports were sent to everyone uh, along with the um, uh, the transactions for uh, up up until the end of last month. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions on them, um, but you have a summary and they're also available on the Google Drive uh, for um, up until the end of March. So I make a motion uh, to approve the internal accounts as presented. I'll second. Open for discussion. Close for discussion. Roll call vote. Mr. Harmia? Yes. Ms. Valentin? Yes. Ms. Keelis is absent. Sorry, Davis, yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Sanchez is absent. Ms. Mr. Oswego is absent. Ms. Is absent. Mr. Gary is absent. Ms. Cervantes is absent. Seven yes, no no. Motion passed. Six fourteen p.m. Okay, so at this time, um, I want to make a motion uh, to go back to public participation. If someone could second that, I second. Open for discussion. Uh, Master Sergeant Davis, we're going to go back to public participation. And if you could read any public participation um, notes or anything that was presented to us um, during that time. Uh, there is nothing to present for public participation unless uh, the last caller uh, logged on want to participate. Uh, so there's no further instruction for public participation. Yeah, I'm asking you to read uh, any emails or anything that you have received for public participation at this time. So we're, we're, we're in discussion. We'll close it and we'll go back to public participation. I hear you uh, about the email, uh, but uh, my instruction was if the guests are here, I should be the voice of a person that's here. And uh, so I shouldn't read those emails. Uh, so if, if y'all telling me otherwise, then I, I will. Uh, I am yeah. interested in hearing that what the email had to say. And I'm interested as well. Can you please share that? So we're going to close discussion. We're going to vote for to go back to public participation. And we will have you read the email, Mr. Master Sergeant Davis. Close for discussion. Roll call vote. Mr. Harmio? Yes. Ms. Valentin? Yes. Ms. Keeler is not here. Sergeant Davis? Yes. Ms. Lopez? Yes. yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Ms. Jesus? Yes. yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Sanchez is not here. Ms. Suede is not here. Ms. Guido is not here. Mr. Garrett is not here. And Mr. Vantes is not here. So I have to go to my email. I have my mask on because I'm at school. You know, uh, no problem. I appreciate you, Master Sergeant Davis.
So, so you ready for me to read it now? Yes, sir. We're in public participation. You're going to hear noise in the background, and I apologize uh, because I am here with uh, archery. So this email is from uh, Mr. Walter uh, uh, Brzezinski. I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing your name right. I guess he sent an email to me. Uh, he said he would not be able to speak live. Uh, but I will be able to. I will be able. I will be available in the meeting to chat to discuss my concerns. But I would like to hear and see my statement of the following subject broached, and they are by now a handful of statements. LSC reps and CPS LSC relationship personnel have received a list of CPS residency val val violations list. Uh, the list includes possible 17 current Steinmetz teacher and staffers, including two department chairs and the head of an educational program. And since 2015 and 2016, it's come to my attention nearly 23 teachers and staff have been in possible violation of the policy, including two former Steinmetz employees now insurers. I want to make sure I stop because uh, if I see names in there, I'm not going to read names. Uh, I hope you all know that. My question is what is being done to self-report this to the CPS OIG, CPS law, and their investigation team in the CPS OEE. Um, I'm not naming the name there, it's in parentheses. Uh, and have a thorough investigation open. And it's been my experience. A CPS school may have one to two violators of the policy, but not uh, the 1723 of the violators and Steinmetz. The Steinmetz admin aware of this and what's going on moving forward. Steinmetz was considered, uh, Charles Potter Steinmetz was considered disabled himself, and I believe it would be a good thing for Steinmetz to highlight the recent improvement around the school to retrofit one elevator uh, for traveling between the first and the third floor, installation of a Lulu elevator for travel between the third and fourth floor, and other ADA and accessible accessibility uh, work that has been done around Steinmetz. The LSC meeting notes for the past three years are liking any mention of this work, and so is the Steinmetz website. In the past, if any individual had an accessible or a mobility issue, the person would have to be carried and helped upstairs, not go up them at all, including attending another school or struggling or crawling up the stairs. My question is, when will the community be able to see pics and stories about the ADA and accessibility improvement in the school newspaper and on the school website? And will something be done to make the front entrance accessible to the field on the east side of the campus currently, there are no ramps leading to the field from the main entrance and those in wheelchair must be carried down the stairs or go to the rear of the building and come back around to the field. Will non-structural damage ramps be installed by the main entrance set of three stairs anytime soon? I was one of the 20 substitute teachers blocked from working in Steinmetz in the 2017-2018 in school year with another two blocked in 2018-2019. None of us. I contacted, I contacted all the subs. We were given no reason why we were blocked and the Steinmetz admin didn't follow the protocol or detail it to the CTU. Was the Steinmetz LLC aware of this and did the LSC now five? Did the LSC know five of the those sub blocked? I'm sorry, I can barely see. Were former Stamets employees? Nine subs were blocked the day before Christmas break in 2007. What is Stamets doing yeah. to work with these students? I'm sorry. What is Stamets doing to work with these subs and remove the block for each one, each one of them? I appreciate this full email read. It's the April 14, 2021 LSC meeting, along with conversation among the LSC. Thank you, Walter Brzezinski. 
Thank you, Master Sergeant, for reading. Thank you uh, for the community comments for Mr. Walter. Um, we will uh, continue our LSE meeting at this time. Um, and we are going to discuss principal evaluation. Uh, my question is when we do discuss the principal evaluation, uh, depending on are we going to discuss the procedure or are we going to do, do we need a closed session? Or do we, uh, what do we need? I think what, what we could do at this time with principal evaluation, we know is due. We could set up a meeting uh, to do, just work on principal evaluation like we did last time because that takes some time. So maybe what we could do at this time is decide on a date when we could come together, right? Part of that meeting is open and part of that meeting is closed. So I definitely think that we need to take time for this process uh, to be fair, um, you know, be fair to this process and, and take our time. Any thoughts? And I agree, and I know during this COVID season that there are some things that, uh, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Armiel, that we're, we're not looking at. And I'm not saying we're not looking at, we're looking at everything, but we just want to make sure that there are some things when it comes to data that's collected and some, I don't know if the principal evaluation has changed to adjust to some of those things. And I think even before we go into the process of you know looking and scoring, we, we have to have a thorough understanding of, of what is uh, uh, you know evaluated. Yeah, and I also think with the pandemic, right? Like I even wonder um, what is CPS doing around principal evaluations? So if we could table this and work with our LSC relations representative, Veronica, um, I think that that would be um, a great next step. So it's just knowing everyone's availability. I know Ms. Russo, Mr. De Jesus, you, you guys are busy now with athletic and everything else. When will be a great day for us to come together to talk only about principal evaluation? I can try and be I can try and be uh, available when you need. Giving you a date that's where I'm free is almost impossible. <laughs> uh, I'm coaching two sports at the same time right now, so oh, because yeah. they are overlapping. So for another week, I'm coaching volleyball and softball. Um, I tend to, if this helps at all, uh, all of my softball games are on a Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So Mondays are probably the best day of the week okay. for me. So, I mean, I can cut my practice short. I'm pretty open. I think Ruth was the one with the crazy schedule. So I'll accommodate her, I guess. You are most kind, Mr. De Jesus. So could we come together um, April 19th, which is a Monday? Council members? That works for me. I, I will just say, uh, I mean, you guys are the ones that are doing the work and going to be uh, busy on that day. But I, I would just remind you the 19th, Monday oh, is the first day right. back. That's right. And that's I right. don't know what, you know, tentatively the first day back, I, I hope it is. Uh, I just don't know what that evening and that day is going to look like for everyone. So so to give everyone an opportunity, um, could we look at then um, Monday, April 26? I, I, I really do think that put it close to the, that, uh, the, uh, that point where we're rushing because May is right around the corner. Uh, May is a... Uh, I mean, Wednesday, I don't know if anybody's able to Wednesday. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Wednesday, but Wednesday is a, a day where we teach fully remotely. Is that day not available? I, I'm not sure you can use a, a, a day that you're using instructional time to do this evaluation. It has to be- No, 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 I'm talking about in the afternoon. Oh, okay. I'm still talking about in the afternoon, but I'm just saying because Wednesday we- that's to Wednesday, and I know I know doing a weekday. I mean, trying to do both in the confusion for Monday and Tuesday is something we're unfamiliar with. I'm probably going to be dirt tired in the afternoon. I just don't know what Wednesday looks like because that is really our function. You know, Master Sergeant, I also want to be fair to this process, and I want to get a day that everyone is fresh 
I think about Wednesday, right? It's midweek, a lot going on. I want to be fair to this process um, as we have in the past, right? So that we have time, we people are available and we're not, cha- you know, this is a priority. So, I mean, I wonder if April 26 just works and then we take our time and go through the process. May I ask, what is the deadline? When do we have to have this finished by? Just so for a sense of timeline. It's May 1st, Ms. Russo, May 1st. But if we need additional time, we're able to take it, right? I think it's communicating to the district that we are doing that. Um, so I think if we do it April 26, May 1st is not to that Saturday. If we submit by May 3rd, I think we're fine. We could even submit by May 1st. We have a whole week. And what time of day are we looking at? Because I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be difficult by any stretch, mm-hmm. but the girls on my volleyball team finish practicing on the 23rd and they're not going to join softball until the 24th. And then our first game is the 27th. So giving up any practice time is near impossible. So unless you're willing to do something later in the evening, like at six 30, I can't guarantee that I could be there. That's the only day that I'm going to have practice with my entire team before our first game. Could we could we do the twenty six at seven p.m.? I have no problem with that. That's fine with me as well. What's for me too? And that's good. That'll give everyone time to finish the mandatory training that we need to take. We need to do, and so I guess that's a good time for us. Okay. Um, so do we need to vote on that? So I make a motion to do our principal evaluate, start principal evaluation process, April 26, Monday at 7 p.m. I second. I think I'll roll, call, <laughs> roll call vote. Mr. Armillo? Yes. Ms. Valentin? Yes. Ms. Achilles is not here. Ms. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Russo? Yes. Mr. De Jesus? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. So I'm Davis, yes. Ms. Sanchez is not here. Mr. Swager is not here. Mr. Toledo is not here. Mr. Harris is not here. And Ms. Cervantes is not here. Seven yes, no no's, motion passed, 6.30 p.m. Great. Um, now we go to any closing statements or any closing, any old business, I'm sorry. No old business. Okay, then I make a motion to adjourn Steinman's local school council meeting uh, for April 14 at 631. Did we really make our beat our record? I second. Roll call vote. <laughs> that was a good one, Ms. Lopez. Uh, Mr. Armillo? Yes. Ms. Keel is not here, son. Davis, yes. 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 Ms. Russo? Yes. Today is Sus. Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Sanchez is not here. Ms. Oswega is not here. Mr. Toledo is not here. Ms. Aguirre is not here. And Ms. Cervantes is not here. Seven yes, no no. Motion passed. 6.32 p.m. Awesome. So thank you, council members. Thank you, community members. Have a great week.
All right. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to stay on until we can get everyone off the call so I can stop the recording. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow.